Got to admit, that was something. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. So yesterday afternoon on the radio, weekdays 3 to 6 on WPRO, I was asking the audience and wondering out loud whether or not President Trump would address impeachment at the State of the Union and whether it would be just kind of a, you know, what kind of show? You know what kind of show I'm talking about? Yeah, that kind of show. Uh, instead, he never mentioned the impeachment and he created a different version of reality television, uh, kind of, <clears throat> that kind of show. And, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi played ball. And it's just, right now it's a head shaker. It's just a head shaker. Glad to have you aboard. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll get into it. And of course, there's this thing called the impeachment trial, which has come to an end most likely by the time you've seen this show, uh, either at 7.30, I hope by midnight. The schedule was that they would uh, kind of acquit most likely by late afternoon. So, uh, Rich Ehrenberg, our professor from uh, Brown University and an expert on the Senate, uh, where this trial is happening, he's, uh, his, most of his career was spent in the Senate, in Senate leadership. He's my, my guest, and he's always, always uh, my go-to guy on the Senate. In the meantime, presidential news here today in Rhode Island. Uh, Mike Bloomberg rolls in and picks up, not surprisingly, an endorsement from our governor. I'm running to bring our country back together and to start putting the United back in the United States of America. We will not retreat in fear. I will not retreat in fear. Mike is not retreating in fear. We have an obligation to do our duty to this country to step up behind a leader who will lead us forward. The only thing that I have to criticize about that is that I, I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one session with the governor and teach her how to say forward. F-O-R-W-A-R-D. She talks about the direction so much that she's got to be able to say it right. Now, all seriousness, and that is kind of serious, all seriousness, uh, the governor has a much higher national profile than she does here in the state in terms of favorability. She's stepping off the head of the Democratic Governors Association uh, leadership. She is, she's the real deal outside of Rhode Island. And we can deliberate that all we want, but it's a big deal for Mike Bloomberg to get that. And it's no surprise because they have a relationship. And by the way, it takes the will Gina leave before the end of her second term prediction to a higher level. I've been telling you that there's a chance that that's going to happen. It's now moved past what I think is the 50% mark. Not necessarily because Mike Bloomberg is going to pull one out of his wazoo and become the president of the United States, which, by the way, could happen. Uh, I just think that Connectivity with Mike Bloomberg is something that Gina Raimondo will probably have in her future sooner than later. But anyway, uh, Bloomberg makes that move. I, I wonder, jumping the gun here, uh, uh, Professor, did you have a thought on Mike Bloomberg's candidacy? Welcome, by the way. Good to no, see you, my friend. Good to see you. Um, it ain't boring, man. It, no. it, the whole world is not boring. But what do you think about Bloomberg before we get into the meat of the news from last well, night? Well, I think before it's all said and done, he's going to be a player. Mm. Uh, and I think that uh, the very, f you know, the very first uh, uh, day out of the gun here with uh, uh, the events in uh, in uh, Iowa uh, have, have, I think, worked to his benefit. Both because complete mess, right? Yeah, because it's a complete mess, and he wasn't a part of it. He skipped Iowa, and. Uh, uh, Biden obviously underperformed in Iowa, and I think that uh, when when we get to uh, Super Tuesday, he he has spent a, a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars in those Super Tuesday states. He's going to be a player. I'm I don't know what you teach your 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 students about the big money in politics. It's it's, a, it's, it's conflict, because I'm a big First Amendment guy, and I think you ought to be able to express uh, yourself th uh, through the currency that you have. 
I don't like the idea that somebody can literally run a presidential campaign without a donation. Um, I think donations are a good thing. Soliciting opinion support and your dollar is your currency of communication there. I think it's a good thing. At the same time, if you're one of those folks who want to see Donald Trump uh, exit stage left in the election, he may end up being the only guy that can do it. Because this field, I mean, you want to talk about, about battle and mm -hmm. war, winning a battle and losing a war. Yeah. You know, Bernie Sanders wins this nomination. This election is over. Who's mm -hmm. kidding who? I know I, you're. I, 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 knew, I knew you're more right. progressive than I am. Right. But, but do you disagree but, with me? Please do. Uh, no, actually, uh, I'm concerned about that. I mean, uh, you're right. I, 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 I don't have. It's not that I have a personal objection to Bernie Sanders uh, in terms of the policies he puts forward, uh, but I think uh, it's it's going to be a very difficult uh, general election for him. If he's the nominee, it's yeah. going to be very difficult to beat Trump. Yeah. He's Not he's, impossible, by the way, hmm. but I think difficult. He's convinced that he can speak to the working person in America and, and go grab those key districts in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Ohio. I'm not so sure, but mm -hmm. we'll see how it plays out. Um, anyway, getting back to the, the business of last night, and it was something. Of course, <laughs> the president touts achievements, whether they were his or not, or whether they were true or not. Um, here's what the network tried to put together in terms of a recap. From President Trump's apparent snub of Speaker Nancy Pelosi's handshake. I don't even know if the president saw the speaker's hand. To her tearing up a copy of the speech when it was over. As far as I'm concerned, the shredder wasn't available, and so she did what she needed to do. The partisan divide was on full display last night. President Trump laid out the accomplishments of his administration and made his case for another four years in office. Jobs are booming, incomes are soaring, poverty is plummeting. The president also delivered several made-for-TV moments, awarding the Presidential Medal of Freedom to conservative radio host Rush Limbaugh and orchestrating a surprise reunion for a military family. The president stuck to his script and did not mention impeachment. Today, the Senate wraps up with a final vote whether to convict or acquit. Candidly to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, I fear that moral courage, country before party, is a rare commodity these days. Every Republican is expected to vote for acquittal, and one or two Democrats may join them. Yeah, that's Joe Manchin from West Virginia. Senator Jones from Alabama actually voted to convict, which is, which is tough for him because he takes he you know he took over in quite the controversy down there in a very very red state. He's so. the most vulnerable. He's the most vulnerable incumbent senator of either party. Yeah. Well, sometimes you you got to make a calculation as to what's right and what's wrong, as opposed to uh, how the yeah, vote count is right. going to be. And I think he did that. Uh, take from the State of the Union last night and all the. I, I, that goes along with it. I felt it was very dis distressing. I mean, it was hyper-partisan. I mean, we, there's always uh, an element of partisanship in the State of the Union, but it's usually pretty subtle. It's, you know, who stands up, who sits down, you know, and uh, what and do you applaud for. And those who sit sometimes smile. Not lately, in the last right, couple of years. Right. But there was a smile. A well, you know, I, when I worked for George uh, Mitchell, I was on the floor for the State of the Union for a couple of them delivered by uh, Ronald Reagan. And, you know, the atmosphere then, there was, you know, there was plenty of politics, but, you know, the sense of moment, the, the, the excitement of having, you know, the entire Congress, the President, the Cabinet, the, the Joint Chiefs, the uh, uh, far, uh, foreign diplomats, the, the uh, Supreme Court, all in the room, there was a kind of heightened sense of this is a, uh, you know, it's an important event every year, a celebration of, uh, of American politics. Well, I, that was pretty distressing last night, I thought. It was hyper-partisan. It started right off from the outset with the chance of four more years. Uh, yeah, it just, was much more yeah. of a campaign speech than it was the uh, State of the Union address. Well, it's going to be funny. You know, we taped the TV before the radio today, but uh, amongst the things that I'm going to do on the radio today is list, list some of the 
peculiar moments and events and see which one bothered you the most mm -hmm. or which one did you enjoy the most. And we'll see what the electorate... I'll tell you one thing, though, Rich. One of the things that I, I have learned over the last few years of the Trump administration, uh, both his candidacy and his uh, elected status, America is not as checked in to custom mm -hmm. and culture of government as you might hope and I might hope. I think they see this thing as a reality television show. Why, why, why wouldn't you want to see a, uh, an army sergeant come back and see his wife and kids mm -hmm. in the balcony? Yeah. If you're part of the yeah. base that listens to Rush Limbaugh, who's got a, you know, who's, who, who in many ways built the talk radio business that I've paid a mortgage with for such a long time, uh, why wouldn't you see Donald Trump take advantage of the moment of his his yeah. distress and his illness for his... Well, for, you for almost th expected him to next, you know, give away a Chevrolet or something, you know. Right? Yeah. Everybody gets a car. Right. Something. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk about why wouldn't you expect Nancy Pelosi to do this? <laughs> and then there's the impeachment thing. Stay with us. Yeah. Yeah, so she did this, right? She ripped the speech, and you saw that. Uh, you saw that last night, and then you get these kinds of reactions. Here's Liz Cheney leading the House Republican charge on the ripped speech. Where she I? is an embarrassment. That she is unfit for office, uh, and the American people are going to have an opportunity to make that decision to choose between two visions for the future of this country in November. When I watch Nancy Pelosi tear up a speech, she cannot tear up the dreams of a 13-year-old great-grandson of Charles McGee. Yeah. Uh. Oh, is that the Charles McGee uh, from Tuskegee who didn't get the medal on his right, chest? Exactly, and Rush Limbaugh did. Of course, yeah. he's, I guess he wouldn't get it because he's... He was a military guy, and that's a, a civilian honor. Uh, but the con well, the Congress, uh, there is a congressional medal that's awarded, and uh, it was awarded to the Tuskegee Airmen some years ago. Mm. And actually, it was Carl Levin, who I was working for at the time. So I guess who, he probably uh, has his own his own version of. But the whole. The, the idea that uh, they're going to wring their hands over Nancy Pelosi uh, ripping the speech, look, I, I, in normal circumstances, Professor, mm -hmm. I would stand in the middle as an umpire, looking at the situation, saying, foul, foul, mm -hmm. foul, yeah. foul, foul. But the rules are changed, yeah. and the fouls don't count to anybody. So you can be high and mighty and say, well, you know, this on the president and this on Nancy Pelosi. But if Nancy Pelosi doesn't start playing his game, she doesn't get a moment to point out how disgusted she is about him. Right, and right. It, I, I don't even know how to write. Yeah. The calculations no, and the moral foundation have been disrupted to the point where you, putting your feet on the ground and is a hard thing to do. You, you make the I, speech. I, well, I just, I, no, I, compl I completely agree with that. Uh, I, I, I wish she hadn't done it. You know why? And, well, because uh, uh, you know I, uh, I I treasure the dignity and the importance of the State of the Union address, and I think uh, ceremony is is very important. It's been very important in our history, and it uh, uh, and I think you know we're we're abandoning that uh, helter skelter. Uh, uh, go, going, you know, outside of the norms, uh, certainly accelerated by this presidency, and I think it's uh, corrosive of the of, of democracy. I, I get it, and your mommy told you, and my mommy told me that two wrongs don't make a right. Right. But you know what? I don't even know if that calculation matters anymore in in the political sense. It certainly matters in in, in your own personal life. I would hope, in mine, in my business. It, it, you know, working with my co with my comrades in, 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 in the business, you know, don't pine the way, being a father and a husband, I, you know, I, I hope that, that those moral standards still matter to me mm -hmm. and to everybody out there. I don't know in politics it matters anymore right now because you, the circus, whoever wins wow. the circus seems to be winning the day. That's right. I don't I, know what the end is, though. I mean, what's the end? 
Well, I, I, I think the, the, you know, we, the, the, you know, we have the hyper-polarized uh, political environment now, not just in the Congress, but in our whole uh, political atmosphere. And it means that the two sides can't get to the table. There's, there's, there's no compromise going on. There's no legislating going on at, at, at the current time. And uh, Some would say that's good. You know, no, no, government no. stops. You know, See, I think that's where the problem is, that if... If you if you can't get the two sides to the table, uh, democracy can't operate, and we can limp along as we've been doing, uh, not addressing the big problems that the nation has. Uh, but you can't do that forever, and it's I think very damaging to the to the to our system of government, and it's very dangerous. Big problems that the nation has. Name two. Well, immigration policy, infrastructure, uh, climate change, uh, health, health reform. I mean, those, you know, these are all things that need to be addressed. Uh, and and, and, and uh, the Congress is not doing that. Mm. And probably won't uh, for the balance of 2020. Certainly won't. When, yeah. we, when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about uh, this whole impeachment process. It's in the Senate. And that's where he used to hang out. Stay with us. President Trump is more inclined to point fingers than to lead us forward together as a United Nation. I think the president demonstrated three things tonight, that he couldn't read a teleprompter. He lied through his teeth to the American people, and he further divided our country. It, it's hard to argue that. Yes. But when you emphatically state it, you're contributing to the divide of the country. Right. And so that's the thing that the Democrats have got to figure out. Likely, though, if you play Patsy, you get rolled over. Right? In an election and certainly in an impeachment, I'm not saying that the Democratic House case is a Patsy case, mm -hmm. but they didn't fight them on witnesses on the House side. They didn't let it go because they had a timing issue, and, they, and they're guilty of, a, of, of considering the timing of an election year more than vetting the particular case. They think they had enough. They sent it to the Senate, and they knew exactly what kind of a train wreck roadblock there or, 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 yeah. or brick wall but, they were going to run but, into, right? But underlying all of this, the real, what's really uh, distressing is that we've known, everyone who uh, observes the Congress has known right from the beginning, going back to the Mueller investigation, that if, it, that if it came to impeachment, that when we got to the Senate, he was going to be acquitted. Well, that's profoundly disappointing, that we would know that before what we knew what the case was, before, before we began to consider the evidence. And the idea that the United States Senate would turn its back on relevant testimony, on relevant documents in the midst of something as serious as an impeachment trial, it's, it's just uh, uh, disgraceful, I think. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, the great Henry Clay who, uh, you know, once said the Senate is no longer a place for any decent man. And he was objecting to the Senate having expunge the, cens the censure of President uh, Andrew Jackson uh, uh, and uh, uh, I mean I, 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 I'm, I'm a, I spent a lot of my life in the Senate and, uh, and it's an institution I love and so I you know I, I, I don't I'm not happy to be uh, uh, observing uh, uh, how, how much uh, the institution has deteriorated. I can feel your heartbreak. But it, it, I can feel your heartbreak over the whole it's time. A dark, it's a dark day for the Senate today, and in many ways, last week when they voted not to hear the evidence, that was even, that was even a darker day in many ways. True, because even though acquittal, and again, the combination of 
evidence trial in, in politics are part of this, of this consideration on impeachment and acquittal, that they didn't, they didn't vote to hear the whole story while it was hovering out there in the news cycle sure. with John Bolton and the like, uh, to go back and say, well, process the way you guys should have brought it, because if you didn't bring it, we're not going to, we are not going to try your case for you. Uh, it, by the way, the Constitution doesn't say how the Senate can conduct its trial, so to suggest that it had to be uniform like that is also baloney, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about that in, yeah, in previous yeah. shows. Well, right, the, right. The, 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 the fact of the matter is that the majority in the Senate can shape the, uh, can shape the uh, uh, trial. Is America tuned in enough to your anguish, not you personally, but, yeah. but the anguish you feel about the Senate? It, the the custom, the culture, the constitutional foundational expectation for the Senate, is it tuned in enough to then turn on these senators in the 2020 election? Everything is so gerrymandered, cut out, constitu I mean, constituent analyzed, red state, blue state, purple state, da, 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 that it almost seems as if the game the game is all too predictable and that lashback is probably not going to happen from America. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it means Democrats taking over the Senate and, and it's, you know, that's not, nothing, by the way, pal, it's nothing right. I ever would have dreamed about. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because I'm not a Democrat. Right. So, I mean, it's just, you're struggling. Give me an answer. Do you think America changes the Senate? I think it can and it should. <laughs> Uh, will it? Will it is it? That's 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 a that's a chance very difficult. of it is what? Oh oh, you know I think I think there's going to be a reaction to this on really on both sides. Uh, you know I mean I see this as an election that where uh, which is going to have a huge turnout, and uh, that turnout is going to be generated on both sides by Donald Trump, hmm. and. That's why I think it, it certainly matters who the Democratic nominee is, uh, but it, but in a in a, but in a, in a way, uh, how that wave of turnout plays out, uh, almost all of those Democratic candidates that are in the race now could in fact uh, beat Trump in the general election. Uh, you know, if the turnout is great enough. I got 30 seconds. Do we ever go back to normal? It gets more difficult all the time. I mean, we've, we, you, you know, as you begin to tear up all of these norms, all of these institutions, you begin to weaken the fabric of the, of our whole uh, normal political life in this country. As I said before, you know, Democracy can't survive this forever. We'll leave it there. Thank you. Do you feel the pain? Final word next. <laughs> right? Sometimes you just got to go. <laughs> we'll be okay. We'll figure this whole thing out. I'll tell you one thing. If you want to see politics and elections as entertainment, buy your popcorn because that's the way it's going to be this year. See you tomorrow.